Well, today I'm taking out Topaz Studio to my creative toolbox. This is episode number 54 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. And I want to take this stock image of this cat, which you can download. You'll find it in the description below this video. Just click on the download link and you'll be able to download it and follow along with me. But let's just jump into this and see where this image can take us. I'm pretty much starting from scratch here and showing you my creative process. The first thing I think I want to do is get rid of some of these whatever these particular plants are, these dried out plants here. I don't think they're adding to the image. So I'm going to put a blank pixel layer above here and with my spot healing tool, and you can type J to get up your spot healing tool. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these, you know, these dead, whatever they are. And the spot healing tool does a really good job of getting rid of that stuff. And sometimes you might have to go over it a couple times. Sometimes you may get a stubborn area. And I think these guys up here, although I think I may end up cropping in this image. I think, I think there's too much space above it. So let me go ahead and grab my crop tool. And right now I'm set to an 8x10 crop, which I think may be good. So let me find a nice crop here if we do this as an 8x10. Yeah, I think I'm going to put this eye on this third right here. And I think that looks good. I may just come in a little bit more, I don't know, maybe something like that. I'll go ahead and delete the crop pixels here. Just click on this check and there is our crop. And I think that's a better crop. And you know what? I'm going to grab my healing tool again and just clean up some of this area down here. It looks a little, I don't know, a little funky. I don't think I want that. This little light area here, I think I'll get rid of that. That. I think I'll get rid of that. This line right here, I don't think I need it. And maybe this light area here, because I think her eye will be drawn to that later. But other than that, there's a little light area here. Sometimes I find these little light areas in a painting can be kind of distracting because sometimes they'll become even lighter and your eye will be drawn to them. But I think right here is a good starting point. So what I'm going to do is just right click in this area and click flatten image. And then let me go ahead and duplicate the background there because you can't send... Well, you could send the background layer into Topaz Studio too, but I don't really recommend it. I'm just going to do a Command or Control J to duplicate the background layer. This way, we'll have the original background layer underneath it, and we'll be sending a copy of that into Topaz Studio too. I'm just going to come up here to Filter and find Topaz Studio 2 and give that a launch, and we will get started. Now, I think I'm going to go right to the Impression Filter, so let's click on Add Filter. And let's click on Impression. The first thing I want to do is find the proper brush. Now, right now, you see these little white specks in here. So I always like to come down here to Texture, open up Texture, slide down some more, and click Original, and those little white flecks go away. Sometimes those little flecks in there look nice, depending what you're going for. But right now, I think they're a little bit distracting. That's why I got rid of them. And already, it looks really nice. It's very soft and painterly. If I left click with my mouse, you can see there's the before and there's the after. But look how nice it looks after you take some of that detail out. I really like that. But let's see if we can find a brush. Okay, so this is type 01. Let's just go through the different brushes. Now, I kind of like that one. That's 02. I see the fur a little bit more pronounced. Let's go through some other ones. I don't like that one as much. Here's type 04. Not filling that one. 05. He shout it out when you see one that you like. Let's try 07. 07 is kind of nice. It lets some of the little hairs stick out here pretty nice. Let's compare 07 to the one I liked. I think it was 02. So there's 02. Here's 07. Which one do you like better? I think I like 07. I think I'm going to stop here. Let's try maybe one more. Let's try 08. Mm, that's not bad either, but I think I like 07. Yeah, I think 07 is it. Okay, so now we can come down here and play. Now we can play with a number of strokes. Let's try low strokes. It's going to be a little more abstract with low strokes. And you know what? I kind of like that. I like how the uh, brush gives me like these little lines that are coming out. I think that looks really nice. Here's medium. 
See, that's more defined. And here's high. That'll be even more defined. So I think I'm liking low. Let me know in the comments section what you think. If you like low versus medium or high. But I think I'm going here. And like I said, I'm just showing you how I work. I'm just going off the cuff here. Just, you know, no, no pre-thoughts here. I'm just working here and seeing what I can come up with. Let's try paint volume. Let's see what this guy does. Yeah, I don't really like what that's doing. It's making the overall image light. So I'm going to shut that off. Now, paint opacity will make it look like we have more paint. Right now, it's at like 50. So let's see how we can add more paint. It gets a little more scattered. And I don't like that. But I liked it right at the default of 50. What happens if I take it back even a little? You know what? And I might do that. I might take it back to like a 40. Now I'm going to left click again. Here's the before and here's the after. So I like the direction it's going in. And then we can play with the uh, stroke rotation. It'll vary the way the strokes are going. See how you can put them on a little bit of an angle, which that's kind of nice. You see that little bit of an angle there. I'll take it the whole way to the left. See how it starts to kind of go down to like around a 45 degree angle when I go right about here. I think I like that little angle. It's adding a bit of whimsy. Here is the before and here's the after. So you know what? Again, I'm taking a journey here and this is what my eye likes. And so I'll just continue to play. But if I get to a point where I think I really like it, I'll just quit at that point. But then we have a rotation variation. I don't want to mess with that because I like what I have. And then if you come here to stroke color variation, you can add a little bit of color into it. You see how some of that color is going here. I'll really exaggerate so you can really see. Not liking that so much, so I'm going to leave that off. Now we have stroke width and stroke length. Okay, so how wide your stroke is. And it defaults at zero and zero for both of these. I'm going to see if we can uh, widen these strokes a little bit. Does that help at all? And I don't know. We can make them even more narrow if we want to. Which, you know what, I might, na I might narrow them up a little bit. And then we could try making them longer. Makes my cat look a little ratty, so I don't like that. What if we shorten them up a little bit? So we can shorten them up. Let's go back to zero. I think I'm going to shorten them up just a little bit. I think that's good. Now this spill, it'll spill out the paint. I'll show you. I'll move it to the right so you can see. See how the paint's starting to spill out? Makes it very sloppy looking. If you double click on spill, it'll take it back to the, to the default setting. Or let's even take it in a little bit. Not much is happening there. But I may just pull it into the left a little bit. So I'm not getting any spill. Now, if you want a bit of a smudgy look, you can drag this slider to the right and smudge it and make it a little more smooth. But you know what? I think I'm going to leave it off. Let me do another before and after. I'm just left clicking right here. There's the before and there's the after. And you know what? I'm happy. So I'm going to stop at this point. You know, we could play with the coverage and the painting progress. And then we have some other adjustments here, like color and lighting. And we can add texture like we could add like a canvas type background but I don't want to mess with any of that stuff I'm really happy but now I want to see what other filter I'd like to add because I want to play with the contrast on this image a little bit I do like the overall soft fill but let's come up to add filter I gotta play so let's click on precision contrast I love precision contrast because what it does is it breaks your contrast down into micro levels of contrast low medium and high and there's also lighting in here as well as an equalization slider and you can adjust color and vibrance here so it's a really cool little filter you can do a lot I'm gonna start out with low contrast I think I'm just gonna to start to drag this to the right and see how I can bring that contrast now if I pull too much contrast I lose that whimsical feel which I don't want to so I got to be very careful here I'm just gonna add a little bit of low contrast not much let's try medium these would be larger areas of contrast. Yeah, and just a little bit of that I think is nice. Let's try high. These would be really big blocks of contrast. See if I really drag it to the right, you can see. And I don't mind a little bit of that large contrast. It's making that background in here go a little on the dark side. And I like that because what it's doing is it's causing my cat to be separated more from the background. And watch, as I pull this into the left, you'll see what I mean. See that? how the cat is more in line with the overall image. But if I pull this eye to the right, it kind of like defines the hairs on the side of this cat or the fur, I should say, right? But let's just find a nice little spot. I don't want to overdo it. I want to maintain some of that detail back in there, but I like that. And we could click this eye and we can see here's the before and here's the after. But I like that little bit of contrast. I think that's really nice. 
And um, let's click here, and that opens up the filter again. We could play with the micro, and let's see what happens if I bring up the micro. See, it's bringing up a lot of detail, which I don't like it. And we can even, it defaults at zero. We can even go a little bit to the left of zero and soften up the image a little bit. But I don't think it needs it. I'm going to double click micro and set it right back to where it was. I like that. And let me play with the low one more time. Yeah, I might give it a little bit more low contrast. Now, this contrast on the cat right here, this marking on the cat, this light area, I think I'm going to go ahead and grab a mask here. And with my brush, and I'll set the transparency to black, I'm going to make my brush smaller. It's got a nice soft radius on it. Edge wear is turned on. That's going to be okay. I'm just going to paint that contrast off of that area right there. See how it tones it down? It may be toned down a little too much, so I'm going to take this transparency slider and drag it a little bit to the right. Makes it more gray. Let's paint over that area again. And now I'll drag the slider a little bit more to the right and add a little bit of that contrast back right here. There, I think that blends in nice now. I'm really happy with that. Now here is the before the precision contrast, and here is the after. Yeah, I think that looks nice. But let's not forget there's more controls inside of precision contrast. So let's click on it and open it back up. Because remember, we have shadow that we can adjust. Let's see what happens if we darken our shadows down a little bit. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. Little darkening of the shadows. Let's play with the midtones. So we want to darken the midtones, maybe not lighten them. Double click midtone, sends it back. I think it was good. Now we can open up the highlights if we want to or darken them down. Not much is happening there. Full highlights, highlights off. So let me double click this. Not much is happening there. Now equalization can be nice. I just click these low, medium, and high and see which one I like the best. See if you can see what's happening. Here's low. See how these areas got darker? I don't like that. Let's go to medium. Medium looks really cool. Let's try high. I don't like high. It gets kind of blotchy back in here. So play with these. I find just click on them and you'll find the one that you like. But medium, I think, is working. Now let's try vibrance, overall vibrance. So the weaker colors will start to come up if I pull this vibrance to the right. Now that's way too much. And... No, I think it was good. Let me double click it, put it back. Let's try overall saturation. I might just take the overall saturation up just slightly. I think right there. Now there's another one here called color contrast. It's dealing with the contrast of colors. You got to be careful with this. If you go too strong, you can see what happens. It'll go crazy, but it's bringing out some of those markings. That's way too much. But maybe a little bit of that might help. Well, that's too much. Well, I don't mind a little bit, like maybe right around there, but it's making this nose look really red. So let's go back to the mask, grab our brush again, and we're going to make sure we have black transparency and little brush, and I'll just paint that off of there. Okay, because, hey, I don't want all that. Now, that may I may want a little bit, though. So let's pull this to the right, make it like a darker gray. Let's paint over it again. Maybe even more. Find that right blend. I think right there. I think that looks good. So here's the overall before precision contrast, and here's the after. And I like it. I think I'm satisfied. Now how about we finish it off with a little vignette. Let's come back to add filter, and we'll find vignette in the creative section here. And just right there, here is the before, and here is the after. And I think that vignette right there looks really good. Now, you can click here, and you can come up here and adjust the strength if you want a little bit darker. But I thought it looked pretty good. You can adjust the size of the vignette. And I think right there in the transition and the roundness, and you can even tell it where you want it to place the center of your vignette. So you can take this and, you know, drag it around. But I think right in the center is where we want it to be. But here's before vignette, and here is after. But I think that does the job. And I think we've got it. Let's check the before and after one more time. Here is the before, and here is the after. I like it. Now all we have to do is click Accept, and we'll go right back into Photoshop. Now that we're back in Photoshop, there's one final thing I want to do. You see this uh, leaves here. I think they're a little bit too light. I'm going to go and grab a 
curves adjustment layer, put it in the multiply blend mode. It makes the whole image dark. Okay, and now I'm going to invert this mask, and that's Command or Control I. It hides it. And now with a very large, soft edge brush, make sure I have white paint. With a nice big brush, as you can see, I'm just going to paint at 20% opacity. I'm going to paint it one time, two times, three times, maybe four times. I'm going to do one more time right there. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. But I just want to tone that down. Now you'll notice I got it on the cat a little bit. So I can go with the opposite color. Right now I'm on white. I'm going to switch my brush by typing the X key. That puts black paint on there. And I'm going to grab 100% opacity. I'm typing my zero key. And I'm just going to paint on my cat right here. Make sure I don't have him darkened. Because I want his face or her face. If it's a male or female, I don't know. Nice and light. Let's take a look at before. This is before the darkening of the leaves, and here is after. Now, if it's too strong, you can take this opacity slider and drag it back if it's too strong, but I like it at 100%. But let's take a look at our overall before and after. I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key down and click on the background layer. We started out with this image, and we end up with this nice painterly image using Topaz Studio 2, what I like to refer to as my creative toolbox. And one final thing, you see this little light area right here? I'm going to go on this painterly layer, type J to get my healing brush, and right on that layer itself, I'm just going to paint over that light area and get rid of it. Even this little light area right here just want to tone that down but that spot healing brush is really great for fixing little things like that but again the overall before and here is the after well there it is everyone there's our painterly cat image all done with topaz studio 2 and a little bit of photoshop i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please give it a like and share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe and click that bell notification icon that way every time i upload a new tutorial you'll be notified about it i want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with dave kelly and i'll see you all right here next time but until then happy editing